Hey guys, Scott here from RC Skunk Works. Today I'm going to show you how to convert a Hobby King Rare Bear into an RC Skunk Works Sick Bear. Before we get started though, I'll give you a, a quick walk around and close look at the original Sick Bear. This one first flew about five years ago. It's only done uh, about 34 flights. We always log our flights. On the side here you can see the uh, speed records which have been logged. The fastest flight was uh, 273Ks an hour. Right, let's have a look inside. This is how the sick bear looks on the interior. For a comparison, you can see it's quite a bit modified compared to your standard layout you would receive in your rear bear. You'll notice that I'm using the Turnergy Plus 60 amp Speedy. I've also got the uh, standalone Eagle Tree airspeed sensor and these pitot and static vent lines go up through the wing to the pitot tube on the tip. That's how we're able to record our speeds. And the elevator servo is just glued into the rear here with a direct link, push rod. Pretty simple. On the standard rear bear, the aileron push rods are designed to come through the top of the wing. But on the sick bear, I've decided to go on the underside, like so. I've also used, on the trailing edge, solid borsa trailing edges and tape for hinges to close look. from the other side. This uh, winglet sort of thin on the tip here was placed just to protect the pitot tube from digging into the ground on landings. That's all. With the elevator, I've also replaced the trailing edge with a solid balsa elevator. Firstly, we'll just start with the basic hardware that's in this aircraft. Got one aluminium spinner, a uh, 5x5E five five prop. Engine mount and prop adapter shaft. The secret weapon, the prop drive 2836 3000 kV motor. Today I'll be using the Trust 70 amp Speedy. Also powering the system will be an Anatec 1.34 cell. Three HXT 900 servos and just your standard push rods and control horns and clevises. The first step is to remove the engine mount and prepare the interior. I'll be using a Dremel and a blade. I've just completed finishing Dremeling out the foam which I needed out of the battery bay here. We'll also remove the engine mount. So let's see how this uh, speedy and battery fit in. This is how the speedy and battery be located. Pretty snug fit. That's all you need. Perfect. Next step is to reposition the engine mount. As you can see, the original motor mount fits perfectly with the prop drive 2836 motor and the prop shaft and prop and spinner are on. Next step is now to do a bit of dremeling to bring this motor back so it fits perfectly. Let's get to it. I've just finished cutting the foam to reposition the engine mount. Haven't glued it in yet. Before I do so, I'll uh, place the engine and the nacelle over top with a prop 
just to make sure it fits before I glue it in. Hey guys, I've just uh, placed the engine engine mount in position with the nacelle on. As you can see, we've got quite a large gap between the uh, spinner plate and the nacelle. So we can easily bring this mount back another 5mm, so it's a nice fit. Hey guys, I've just uh, cut this strip of foam out to reposition the uh, engine mount. It's now approximately 39mm from the front edge and it's a good fit. So now we'll just uh, place an cell on just to make sure and if it fits we'll uh, glue it in. So this is the uh, engine in its final position. Nothing's glued in yet, everything's just placed here just to make sure. So we've got perfect clearance between the uh, spinner backing plate and the nacelle. And also the offset to the right of the engine is also looking pretty good. Front view, looking perfect. Time to glue it in. The glue has now set, and I've also glued around the battery bay just for extra strength and also around the spar. I've mounted in the motor just to make sure it fits and all clearances and also have a look at the front I've got the perfect offset to the right there. So the next step is now to install this speedy. The electronic speed controller is now in position. All I've used to secure it is this double sided scotch tape. Works well. Now for the next step, the wing and tail plane. What I've done here, I've taped up the uh, holes on the top of the wing. And what I'll do is fill those in with epoxy from the bottom side. I've already cut off the ailerons and also the elevator of the tail plane. You also see I have here a 5mm by 1mm carbon rod. This would be the rear spar of the wing which will be glued onto that surface. I've just finished gluing the trailing edge spars onto the tire plane and onto the wing. If you look closely, the spar on the wing goes all the way through into the fuselage and they cross lap and I've embedded it in epoxy to create a spar box. The glue I'm using is just a 30 minute epoxy from Hobby King. The next step now is to manufacture the trailing edges for the tail plane and ailerons. Here are the ailerons and elevator. The ailerons are approximately 16 centimeters in length and the elevator is 20 centimeters. The elevator and ailerons have now been hinged. All I've used is a foil tape which you can find from any hardware store. The next step now is to glue on the trailing edges for the wing tips and for the tail. The trailing edge tips of the tail plane are now on as well as the wing trailing edge tips. They've been sanded back and as you can see this time I put a bit of reflex in them just to try and help reduce the induced drag at high speeds. Next step now is to attach the control horns and install the servos. The elevator control horn is now in place with the push rod attached. I've taped up the elevator in the neutral position. This is so I can get the correct length of the push rod before I cut it but after I install the servo. You'll also notice that uh, the empennage is only taped on. This is the way it will stay until the servo is in and been tested with the elevator. Then it will be glued on. I've just cut out this slot for the servo to fit into. So let's get it in place and uh, get that push rod cut to length. Okay, that's how it looks with the servo in place. As always, nothing is glued in until everything is uh, just checked and tested. The next step is now is just to uh, mark the appropriate location where to cut this push rod. Put on the clevis and uh, test the system. 
push rods cut the lamp, servos installed and bench tested. Now we'll glue it in. Next step is installing the aileron servos. To glue in this servo, all I'm using is this adhesive silicon and to glue on the empennage I'll be using the 30 minute epoxy. I've just hooked up the aileron servos to find their neutral position and place the control arms on before we glue them in. And they're working fine. Aileron servos are glued in. As you can see I've used the silver foil tape to cover them up. Push rods are attached. The next step is now to screw in the control horns. Aileron servos are all hooked up now. You'll notice that with the servo control arm, it's located forward. This gives you a mechanical differential of the ailerons, which should help counteract the adverse yaw, especially at high speeds. Guys, I just want to show you what I mean by this mechanical differential setup on the ailerons. If I apply full right aileron, you'll see that the deflection on the aileron going up is almost double what it is on the left going down, and vice versa. Full left, and the deflection is over double what it is on the downward aileron on the opposite side. This is differential set up mechanically, and like I said, it will help you with the adverse yaw effects, especially at high speeds. The vertical stabiliser is now glued on. I'll just show you what I've done down here. I've just cut the bottom edge off the stabiliser just to give enough clearance for the control horn to move in the up position. I've also decided to use the Turnergy Graphene 1.3 4 cells. They fit in nicely as you can see. The next step is now to give it a coat of paint. One last look at the interior setup. I'll get the canopy on and show you how she looks. As you can see I've gone for a high vis colour scheme just to help track the aircraft at high speeds. Well guys, that uh, completes the build. I've hoped you found the video helpful and uh, we'll try and get a maiden video up as soon as we can. Thanks for watching. Cheers.